Jetset is an iPhone app that works with a piece of software called AutoShot, and together, you can preview your 3D environment in real time, including animated characters. You can see your actor in the scene, and it knows where your actor is in 3D space, so you can see 3D objects in front of your actor as you're looking through your iPhone. It's really cool, and it allows you to compose better VFX shots. Jetset takes all of the camera motion data from all of your takes and recreates that camera with the exact movements in a Blender scene. You can calibrate it to offset between your phone and your cinema camera, so your footage will be tracked perfectly to your 3D background. AutoShot also creates a plane with your footage on it in 3D space in your scene. Everything perfectly aligned. That means you can shoot handheld on a green screen and get shots like this without tracking a single frame. All you need is an iPhone and a camera. I want to put Jet Set to the test by creating this sci-fi series in my Friends of Sophia universe. What I want to find out is, can I use these tools to help tell a story? Can I continue to grow and develop a sci-fi world on an indie budget? How far can I push my VFX capabilities with this new tool? And how does this affect the timeline of a project? And why not throw in a 3D animated robot as a main character while we're at it? What the f*** is wrong with you? Did you not hear me yelling? First, I started building my 3D scene for this first episode. In the Friends of Sophia world, the characters live and work in an indoor cyberpunk city in a massive tower owned by the company. I wanted this scene to take place in a dark, forgotten alley in that city. I used this model as a starting point and started blocking out my shots. I took the 3D model of the military bot from Friends of Sophia and rigged it in Character Creator so I could animate it in iClone. This allowed me to combine and edit Mixamo animations, Realusion animation packs, and some keyframing. From there, I exported an FBX file of the robot, whose name is Bytes, and brought it into Blender. The next step is bringing that 3D scene into the JetSet app, and that's done by exporting a USD file. Using Lightcraft's AutoShot software, you can convert that USD file into a USDZ file, which is just a zipped version of a USD file that contains all of the textures. What's really cool about the AutoShot software is you can resize all the textures in your scene so you can keep your USDZ file pretty small. Because the scale of this alley scene was so large, I decimated the geometry quite a bit. My USDZ files were really pushing the limit in terms of what Jetset could handle without crashing, but more on that later. When you open the USDZ file in the Jetset app, you can preview your scene, including animations, in real time. So from my own apartment, I can explore the environment and find the best angles for the scene. I can record takes using the app and then edit together a previs version of the scene. So you have the time to iterate and explore without burning time and money on a production day. And you end up with a super detailed production plan when you do get to that production day, making everything more efficient. When you're shooting with a cinema camera, you need your iPhone mounted to the camera, and you do a quick calibration using JetSet and AutoShot. You take a series of reference frames, and then AutoShot calculates the offset between the two cameras. I found the lens calibration to be super smooth and super accurate. But if you do end up getting some slipping, Elliot at Lightcraft has a tutorial about getting a sub-pixel accurate track using Synthize from Boris FX. And I have an affiliate link to Synthize in the description below if you happen to be so interested. After lens calibration, you set your origin point and do a 3D scan of your set. This is super helpful, especially if you have objects on set your actor is interacting with, so you can line everything up perfectly in Blender. When you roll a take, AutoShot flashes a series of QR codes that act as a slate. This will be used to match your jet set data with the cinema footage. I do think one of the coolest aspects of using jet set is uh, in real time, you can see objects pass in front of your actor, so you can find really interesting shots um, that you wouldn't really get if you were just shooting flat green screen plates. For one of our longer shots, I did some takes of the actor passing behind a stairwell, um, me following them around the stairwell, and then filming them through um, the steps of that stairwell. And they were all interesting shots with a lot of camera movement that I don't know I would have tried if I didn't have the Jet Set app. App crash, can we cut? Oh, app crash. During production, we did have a few app crashes, and I think that was just because my USDZ files were a bit large. I had way more geometry in the distance than I needed, so if I were to do it over again, I would have just focused on the immediate geometry, like the wall behind the actor, the stairwell that they would be walking around, things like that. And everything else in the background, I could have just used an image plane or something, and that would have made the USDZ file much smaller. So just a heads up if you're planning big, expansive environments. But even with some crashes here and there, the day went incredibly fast. When everyone on set can see what 
specifically you're shooting, everything clicks into place a lot faster than referencing just previs storyboards like I've done in the past. Once you're done, AutoShot takes all of the data from all of the takes you've done and pulls it from the Jet Set app and drops it onto a hard drive. So you're ready for post-production. Post-production is where this whole system is a real game changer. With AutoShot, you can point to your cinema footage and proxies, and with only a few clicks, AutoShot will create a Blender project with your cinema camera in it, including the motion and focal length because of the calibration you did. It'll transcode an EXR sequence of your footage with an AI mat, convert your project to the frame rate that you shot it on, so you can shoot in 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second, like I did with the jumping shot to get some slow motion, and it'll sync everything together perfectly. So you can get your whole production day to this post -vis version in less than a day. No tracking, no keying. For me, this is the most remarkable part of the process. And as I was editing and wanted to swap out takes, the process was just as easy. You just rerun AutoShot and it'll generate a new version. And after that, it's just a matter of finishing your VFX shot. I keyed the footage in After Effects and swapped the image sequence. I appended the non-decimated version of my scene, tweaking and kitbashing as necessary to get my shots finished which is the fun part of doing VFX. Jet Set and AutoShot take care of the tedious parts of the process so that you can focus on the creative storytelling aspects. This one minute episode went from production to finished VFX in just a week. with you. Did you not hear me yelling? Do you have a problem? Do you have a boyfriend? Huh.